Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to take a look at Flash and show you how to work with the basic interface. So come along here, open up Flash, and click on Flash File Action Script 3. And here's the interface right here, and you can see here's the timeline where you do your animation, and below is the stage where you're going to put your animation elements. Over here on the side are the different tools that you can use to work with Flash. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually import an image and make a button out of it and uh, I'm going to import some images into the library that I have on stage. So I'm going to File, Import to Stage or Library. I'm going to import them to the library. I always feel like I have a little bit more control when they're in the library. So let's click on Import. And I'm on the desktop. I'm going to go to Icons. That's the folder the images are in. And I'll click on this little thumbnail here so I can actually view the images, get the right one. And here's a, a image from Julie Rain's course we're going to turn into a button. So let's go ahead and import that into Flash. Okay, that now is imported into the Flash library, so I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to go to Library. Now, I can hit Control l to get there as well, and let's click on Library, and there's my library right there, and there's my one image. Now I'll click on that, and I can actually preview it. Isn't that pretty cool? And what I want to do is actually drag that to Stage. So let's do that next. So here's my stage element down here where I want to put my image, but one of the problems is that the stage itself is too large. I want to make it the size of the image. And this particular image is 160 by 120. So I'm going to Window, and I'm going to hit Properties. And the shortcut for that is Control F3. So click on Properties. And here's my stage size. I want to change that so that button is uh, so that the stage fits the icon. So let's come down here and change this to 160 to 120. And I'll go ahead and change the frame rate or keep the frame rate at 24 frames a second. That's the uh, flex frame rate. And what I'm going to do is eventually is show you how to bring this SWF into flex and control it using Action Script. But for now, we're just going to show you some basic flash and how to build a button. So control, and uh, we should be in good. And we can see our stage size is changed to 160 by 120. We have to find it, though, because now it's smaller than what we're seeing. So we're going to scroll around here. There it is right there. Let's bring it over here. And there's my new stage. Really tiny, but that's good. That's what I want to be, size of the icon. Now I'm going to come up here and start working with the timeline a little bit. I'm going to come over here to about frame, uh, well, let's choose around frame 14. Right click and hit insert frame. And now that gives me, uh, in this line right here, a chance to put some frames. Now I want to click right here in the white. That's the actual frame number. So if I click here, you can see it's frame 8. Or click here, you can see I'm on frame 11. And somewhere around the middle, I'm just going to right click, there you go, and hit insert frame. Now there's another way to do this, insert keyframe. And what and the way you do that is you hit the F6 key. And I'll go ahead and learn the shortcut command, just memorize it because you're going to use it over and over again. It will save you lots of time in Flash. So the F6 key, and I've inserted a frame. So what is a keyframe? In the old days when animators like for Disney uh, used to make movies, they had their senior animators and they had their junior animators who were just getting into the drawing process. So the senior animators would draw frames in between uh, the movie. So you, maybe you'd have a 25 frame section or a 15 frame section and the, the key animator would do the first one and the 15th one and then the junior guys would come in and draw the, what we call the tween or the frames in between. So the keyframe is the main frame and that, that terminology has stayed with us. So we're going to come along here and put another layer. Now one of these layers is going to be our actions layer and the other is going to be where the actual image goes. The bottom one right here I'm going to call that actions. But I don't want my actions to be on the bottom. I want it to be on the top. So all I have to do is grab this and drag it to the top. You see that? And I'm going to double click here and I'll let this be my image. Or we'll call this animation. There we go. And what I want to do is actually drag my image now onto stage with that highlighted. Now if I have problems, sometimes I might drag it up here accidentally. So if I want to keep that from happening, I can hit the lock button here. That allows me to do nothing to the top frame. All right. But when I come and start putting some action scripting in there, I might want to change that or elements in there change that. Here's my image right here. And I'm actually drag that onto stage now. So I'm going to grab it and drag it onto stage. And it's on the stage, but it's not quite where I want it to be. And I want to get it right on. And it's kind of hard to tell here with the color differentiation. It's about right here. And we know that's not quite right. So let's go to Windows Properties and let's go ahead and bring up the Properties panel. And what I'm going to do here is make sure my image is clicked on. And here's my X and Y. I'm just going to check my, change my X to 0. And my Y to 0 is going to put that image right in the very top corner of that, and it'll fit the stage completely the way it's supposed to. Isn't that great? So I think I'm pretty much done with properties for now.
I have my image where I want it to be, and now I want to tween it. So I want to put a keyframe at the very end right here. So I want to hit that F6 key. There's that keyframe right there. And in the middle, that's where the tween is going to change. So I'm going to put another keyframe there. But before I do that, let's go ahead and create a tween motion. I'm going to right click here in the uh, frame and go create tween motion. Now I can right click anywhere within that frame set, but uh, I have to hit that create tween motion. And there we have it, and uh, we're tweening, but nothing's happening. So let's actually make something happen. And by doing that, I'm just going to put another keyframe right there, hit F6 right in the middle. And I want this to actually get darker when I roll over it. So I'm going to bring my properties panel back up, make sure my image is selected. I go to color, I'm going to hit brightness, and I'm going to slide this slider to, um, oh, maybe negative 10%, make it darker. The great thing about flash, you can actually see it change. Move this up a little bit so you can see the change. you can actually see this image change as I scroll darker. So actually, let's go for 20% so you can actually see the change really well. And we're done with that, so we'll get rid of our properties panel. Get out of the way. And now we can see as I slide here, I'm bright, and here I'm dark, and I go bright again. So what I want to do now is actually control this, because if I run the program now, it'll just go from uh, bright to dark to bright to dark. Let's do that now. Hit Control, Test, or Play Moving. Use the Enter key. Actually, Control, Test. Test movie, control enter. Let's open that up. And you can see right now it's just getting lighter and darker and lighter and darker and lighter and darker. I want to stop that, and the way I do that is I use action scripting. So let's uh, get out of this and go back to our program and put some action scripting in. Now, I'm going to show you the first command in action scripting that everyone learns. It is the most important command in all, it is the most important command in all of action scripting. It is the stop command. So not just in action scripting, but sometimes in life, uh, that command is very important. So we'll click on that frame where we want to put the action script. I'll take the uh, lock off for now. And we'll just go to Windows, and we want to go to Action Script. And that's F9, that shortcut key. So you want to learn those shortcut keys. We'll save you some time in the future. Here's my action script right here. And I just want to type in the stop command. It's just S-T-O-P, all small letters, open and closing parenthesis, and then end it with a semicolon. That's my first set of action scripting. Welcome to action scripting. You're now an action scripter. Now, uh, that's not enough because when I hit that and I want to play it forward, I'm going to want it to stop over the dark. So basically, it's going to be a rollover button. When I roll over, I'm going to want this frame to play, and then I'm going to want it to stop. And so what I want to do is put another stop action there, and go ahead and hit stop, and your semicolon. And that's your second line of action scripting. That you've done it. File, save. And we're going to call this, uh, go up here and put it back in the icons folder. We'll call it button one and save it. And now I'm going to control test it and see what happens. And we can see that my program doesn't seem to be acting correctly. It's, it's blinking fall on and off, and I expect it just to stop. So there must be an error somewhere, and there is. And we've got the error panel right here. And what, look what's happened. I've actually put a curly bracket right here on the stop command as opposed to a just a parenthesis closing, as opposed to a closing parenthesis. So let's go ahead and go back and do that uh, correction. I'm going to go back to action scripting. I'm going to hit the F9 key or go to Windows Actions, bring up my actions panel. Let's examine both stop actions. And I really did messed up, messed up on my bracket. So I want to go back now and uh, get both of those. Uh, let's go ahead and get out of this. And let's, oh, same thing here. So let me fix both of those commands. Okay. Let's go to the first one. Just retype them. Make sure those, those are parentheses, opening and closing, and not, um, and not curly brackets. Now, sometimes you need the curly brackets, and sometimes you need the parentheses. Just make sure you get them both right. And I think I got it right that time. Uh, let's check the other one real quick. I'm just retyping to make them, because sometimes it's hard to differentiate between a parenthesis and a curly bracket. I mean, I make this mistake commonly, um, or every once in a while. So here we go. Now I've done it, and now let's control test now. And there you go. You see it stopped on the first frame. It's not blinking back and off again. And so that's what you want to do. And now I'm going to take this into Adobe Flex and show you how to put an SWF and control that timeline and turn this into a button for Flex.